I'm like that. Part you're of your locked. Game. Are people gonna come in? Part of your game? <laughs> we yeah, are rocking and rolling, door. gentlemen. Hey, we're locking the door. You gonna let people in during the party? I don't know. I kind of like. I want that guy to come back and bring a chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I That's don't know. What I, want. I, vote, I vote for locking the door. Okay, well then we're gonna lock the door. And by the way, we are on, gentlemen. Oh, I'm good. George, and I'm joined by. You guys know your own name. I'm Tim. I'm Gary. I'm Walls. I'm Donnie. And here we are. Here we are. I hear that. I'm Donnie. I, I immediately think of mall rats. Or call me Donnie. <laughs> call me Joey. <laughs> Good times. Well, I sure hope it rains. Temporary. It's rained like every day. How about some yeah. more rain? For 20 days. I'm going to start building an art. Ripple. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on. You guys, read, you guys read the questions hey, I asked you? We're lucky listening? we yeah. got <laughs> What's that? Which is the questions that you sent. Yeah. Right? Good Which is funny, because the first one, yeah. you have comic book fatigue, right? Yeah. Movie, comic book, or yeah. superhero fatigue, fatigue, fatigue yeah. right? Yeah. The second one, ask if you've seen a Deadpool movie. Yeah. 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 And the third one, what's your favorite Wolverine story? Yeah. And Wolverine's not in the story anywhere, in the movies anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, all three of those movies sort of tie in in a strange way for me, because I was sort of chuckling after I read all three of them. Yeah, I know. And, uh, I, I concur. Let me know if this bothers you guys. We can... Oh, I'm just oh, which is yeah, you know from <laughs> to get into it uh, about the movie about uh, Infinity War, which I already said was my favorite movie. It's yes. I don't know how they're going to incorporate the X Men or the FF if they're going to be in it because no one knows what's going to be in the second movie. Right. But how could you have the Marvel universe? I mean, like I said, I didn't see any flaws in the movie what they presented, but it's it's very apparent that the X-Men and the FF are not anywhere mm -hmm. in the universe. Right. How right. could how could Wolverine and the rest of the X-Men not be in the Marvel Universe fighting Thanos? Maybe they'll bring Reed and he'll like fix everything. <laughs> but I'm saying they're, they're nowhere to be found. You <laughs> yeah, know, they, they, all, because the whole cross-section of the super Marvel superheroes is in the movie. But yet they're not, they don't have some of the most famous, like Wolverine. Where's he at? Well, uh, with, with Captain Marvel. Where would Marvel? Magneto be with the Infinity Gauntlet? Right. Yeah, is that yeah. thing not made of metal? I mean, I don't know. I would think it would be an alter dimension. Like, I mean, if if Captain Marvel hasn't shown up on the scene yet, who's to say that there isn't a tear in the fabric of the universe? You know, interdimensional Great travel. Great Scott, but, it, but, it's, but it's not presented that <laughs> well, way. Well, Captain Marvel. Not yet. If I gotta be, if I gotta be real uh, critical of it, it's not presented that way. Yeah, that this is an alternate universe. It's Marvel for folks universe. like us. This is the Marvel universe. Oh, it yeah. is. I'm saying those folks might come from. An alternate universe, not the one that we're watching now that's taking place in Infinity War, but if there's like a tear in the space time continuum or something, because that's even if they're going to carry over the, the continuity from the Fox movies, yeah. you know, I could see them bringing in FF and X Men and not touching any of those movies, just leaving yeah. that alone. Well, especially since I, the that, last... that's my impression in my mind. That's yeah. I mean, those what, Spider Man that... movies, I didn't think they were great, but they made a ton of money yeah. and they still just ignored all of it and started with their own right. Spider Man. And if Hugh Jackman, who's the best part of that, whole series is done anyway they Along can introduce with, the x-men i'm without thinking i'm thinking Patrick new Stewart. new yeah, players new everything fresh yeah. start yeah sure and, but in but, part, I, but in i agree part, where, where are they why aren't they around how do you explain that yeah, yeah where I are the that. where where are the inhumans and where are all these super powerful superheroes why aren't they in this movie yeah i don't know i mean i guess no matter how big the story is it can't be because I, that question could be asked of anybody I mean why limit it to just the characters that have already had big feature like films like X-Men I mean where's the in-betweener where's Galactus where's you know I mean where's the Celestials where is the Watcher well, you can go down yeah. a list and, yeah. and say that you know I don't know are we only focusing on X-Men and FF because they've had a movie I mean how big can it get? They've got 10,000 characters under the Marvel license, and half of them disappeared. <laughs> I, guess, I guess going back to X-Men. i got to say, I really hope that uh, Molten Man's one of the ones that, that Pete <coughs> Where is, Pete. Where where is the Howard the Duck movie? <laughs> yeah. yeah, where's he at? You know, I just think, though, I think when it, always, it reflects back on the X-Men or Fantastic Four, it's because they are such... prominently figures sure. into yeah. the Marvel Universe. Huge. I mean, there, yeah. there's, it's, you know, yeah. a, big, again, a big part of... You know, the, the, the question... You know, where's Deadpool? Because Colossus, we're sitting there looking at him on a comic book, and he's in the Deadpool movies. Yeah. Yeah. Because that means the X-Men. So where is this whole storyline in Infinity War? That's such a great exchange between them two, man. That, yeah. that just, like, makes the movie. I mean, 
It's not the whole movie, but I yeah, I wasn't it. sure how I enjoy it. I wasn't sure how Colossus <laughs> would work when I saw the first I enjoy one, it. and I freaking loved. Yeah, it. I just great. loved. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. He's like his sort of like a conscience, a big steel yeah. conscience walking yeah. behind him. And it, it I didn't see yet, but the previous Colossus looks better in this movie than he has in previous movies. It's yeah. good. It's good. The CGI. We don't saw it. No, we, we saw Thursday. Thursday. Deadpool too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it yet either. Yeah. Well, no spoilers. No, we won't talk it about it. Freaking awesome. It was Did great. you enjoy it? It was great. Thoroughly it entertaining. Looked, it looked. Yeah. It looks I, will, I enjoyed it more than the first one, and I thought the first one was good. I think I did too. Like looking back on just it now, minute to minute, it, there, okay. it was entertaining the whole time. Yeah. Because I, I no downtime. The first one took a while to sink on me. I saw it at the theater, and I wasn't. It did. Yeah. It it, it it was okay, but it didn't. There's I've seen it again. I liked it a lot more. Well, there's something about the idea that when you get the origin out of the way you know what I mean I think I think that's a big part of it like that first one I don't think we I think we can spoil that one yeah he spent a lot of time on him becoming Deadpool and that like torture deal and all that yeah I was kind of like they could have done a rocky like montage and just whipped us through this instead of taking a half an hour to do all that it kind of was a Mm buzzkill but this one since they got all that out of the way it it moved forward and it and I mean it slowed the movie down it did the first yeah it's action cable looked great very beginning yeah Yeah. Yeah. and and it had it kind of like the Marvel stuff it was multifaceted like it wasn't a I don't know I I think of I always compare this to Pee Wee's Big Adventure (laughs) that movie had that movie had it was like an hour and a half hour and 40 minutes and I loved it but the whole plot was him trying to get his bike back that was the whole arc and it was just him on this one thing whereas this movie (laughs) <laughs> not to make comparison to Deadpool too, but it was more like ongoing. Like there was a bunch of things happening. It right. wasn't like, oh, okay, in ten minutes you kind of get what's going to happen. You're just along for this ride that just yeah. kept taking twists and turns. And I, Ooh. I can't say enough good things about it. I really liked it a lot. I, I like how Large Marge sent you. Yeah, yeah, and a hell of a soundtrack by <laughs> the way. Large Marge is in Deadpool. Yeah, uh-huh. that'd be great. Uh-huh. That's the only way it could have been any better. Keep in the hole. <laughs> And, and a hell of a soundtrack. That's the last thing yeah. I'll say on yeah. that. Yeah. I just hope if they do manage to put Deadpool into the MCU, they keep Ryan Reynolds instead of starting over with him. Yeah, I don't. Right. I don't think you're going to find anybody better. That's a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Again, he has the advantage of wearing all that makeup, so he doesn't have to age. Does that right. make sense? Oh yeah. yeah. And it's funny because Ryan Reynolds is a very good looking guy, and then yeah, they make him yeah. probably the ugliest. You know, yeah. other than the yeah. thing. How yeah. ironic is that? Yeah. yeah. But he can actually uh, kind of, you know, ride that out for a decent amount of movies if mm-hmm. he wants to. I was, I was yeah. telling George I saw some like you know pictures on the on the web, so you know it's got to be true. But you know, yep. Josh, <laughs> Josh Brolin, all that the stuff he did, trained to be cable and stuff, man, he was freaking put together, man. I mean, yeah, like it wasn't just all CGI. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was cool. Yeah, I'm just shocked he lost so much weight since playing Thanos. Right, I don't know how he pulled that off. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood, Hollywood. He sanded yeah. that chin down a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, "Wow!" He doesn't look like Grimace anymore. Yeah, no, <laughs> I thought he looked like Rick from Pong. Cookie, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanos. Uh, well, he's like, I'm going to wipe out half the universe. How about thirty percent? Yeah. Get, <laughs> let me get, uh, I got a guy. Let me get my guy to come in here. And look at this gauntlet. I got a guy. I got, I got an expert. I got in. a guy who specializes in multi-dimensional yeah. artifacts. Yeah. You know what's crazy is with with Thanos. I mean, Spider Man and Batman and X Men. Uh, I think all those things, and obviously in the last ten years, Captain America and Iron Man. Those have all been in the pop culture subconscious for a long, long time. I think like Spider Man and Batman transcend comic books. If you're not into it at all, you still know who those guys are, mm-hmm. right? And and it, it continues. Yeah. Well, now like Thanos, even five years ago, nobody knew who Thanos oh, yeah. was. You know what I, I mean? I remember they, when they it's had awesome. Thanos first appear in the post credit scene of the first Avengers movie. Yeah. You remember that? I remember there were a ton of people who were like, was that was that Hellboy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I was like, no. Yeah, well, well, the crazy thing is, it, it's the old uh, muck monsters. It's one thing and man thing. Yeah. It's like Thanos and Darkseid both showed up at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really crazy. Yeah. Because they look very similar. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. But Marvel well, as usual, taking that step in the movies and yeah. tearing yeah. it up. Well, and I've got I've got friends that aren't were never into this and made fun of me, you know, mercilessly. And then I have them calling up, going, "What? What's the story on this?" Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm at work and people were talking about it. Like, just curious. like it's becoming a thing where the the society, the pop culture at large, people that weren't into it or had no reason to be into it now kind of need to know about it. And it's weird because all these little nerd jokes that we mm-hmm. used to just share amongst us. Uh, just a quick example: a buddy of mine. Um, who shall remain nameless, Shane Malice, wrestles on <laughs> horrible wrestling shows. He'll take a date for the worst product everywhere. And he's always wrestling. I mean, he wrestles for good places too, but he wrestles for a lot of really, really crappy places. And uh, 
I sent him a message because um, he's always, I was like, why are you always on these shows? Like, you, like you only have so many bumps you can take in your life. Why are you spending it in these, these crappy shows? And he's always like, I just can't say no. I'm just always on them. So I sent him a message that just said, uh, hey, last night I had a dream that I was able to harness all the energy that you've ever spent on really crappy wrestling shows. And with it, I was able to conjure up and bring into existence a seventh Infinity Stone. <laughs> and he, like, shared it. And he you know it gets a bunch of likes. And everybody knows what I'm talking about. I was like, wow, like, he's into stuff. But the fact that his mom knows what that yeah, means and yeah. finds it funny. I don't right. know. Well, well, going back to the question, getting any better than that. No, I was just said doesn't get any better than that. Oh, like I'm simultaneously yeah. annoyed and amused. It's like when you like an indie band and then all of a sudden they blow up and everybody likes them and you want to be like, no, stop it. <laughs> I like I, yeah, I like Thanos. I like Thanos when only ten other people yeah. I know knew he took half the universe. Yeah, yeah, but that, yeah but that 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 goes all the time and stuff when people say all these punk bands sold out. I heard it for years mm-hmm. in music retail. It's like, hey, the greatest band in the world is blah blah blah, and I tell everybody twenty four seven. And then all of a sudden they blow up and all of a sudden I hate them. They sold out. It's like, no. Everyone just got on board with everything you've been telling me right. for the yeah. longest time. Yeah. I never understood People that. People agreed It's like that. they sold out. Yeah, they sold out every arena, as, as, as <laughs> yeah, they all jokingly yeah. said. It's yeah. like my problem with the whole they sold out. It's like, oh, wow, it's almost like their goal was to make money and do this for a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. To be able to do whatever they want <laughs> yeah. and produce these albums as nicely as they can. Yeah. All the big producers and the money and the... In the studios and everything, and, and it never made any sense to me. They Screw sold them, out. Right? Well, for some it's reason, like, it's like all of a sudden they did a disco or a jam band album because that's what was popular. Well, then we have a problem. I yeah. guess. Right. But I, if, if they're doing everything they want and they sound great, they don't have to sound like they live yeah, in no, a garage. They're no longer yeah. part of the struggle anymore. Thank you, some people. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. hey, they made money. I'm still not making. You, you money. no longer <laughs> identify yeah. with them. Yeah. 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 Hey, it's, it's like when, we're rich now. when Spider-Man's no longer a nerd, it's like, oh, so right around the time he marries Mary Jane and, <laughs> you know, and, and has a good job, and it's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. and, and back to the uh, superhero fatigue, um, show me another line of movies out there that's as interesting. As oh, for done. sure. Yeah, sure. You know, so whenever people say, are you getting tired of it, it's like, no. no. Because, no. Yeah, there's, there's... I'm not. Yeah, well, it's wait, absolutely no. Well, let's also, face it, we waited for this, like, all our lives, Well, basically. yeah, especially we, us older guys. Yeah, we, we waited for... <laughs> so, I never would have fathomed. I've said it before on these podcasts before. I would have never fathom. You know, I knew... I wasn't, you know, completely blindsided. I mean, I understand technology a little bit, but I never thought we were going to be seeing this like like it is. You right. know, mm-hmm. you know, I thought we'd be you know, doomed to people in suits or whatever as yeah, best yeah. as they yeah. could do things. You yeah, know, yeah. you think that you know for a long period of time, then all of a sudden, you know, the computer age things catch up, and you're like you know, mm. I remember first seeing CGI stuff first. I'm like, well, that's, yeah. People make fun of me for liking claymation. At least claymation was real. I mean, I, yeah. I, you know, I, it was I, consistent yeah. with itself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I was not really impressed old, uh, at first. I'm like, this is the old Harryhausen. Is dull. Yeah, exactly. Harryhausen. I love that King stuff. Kong. This is. Uh, I didn't like it, you know. Yeah. But now they've perfected it. You know, you know, I went so, back with so my daughter and that. watched the first Iron Man, and it's amazing how far they've come. I mean, it's a good mm-hmm. movie, right. but it <clears throat> it feels so tame, like in terms of the just I don't know. I don't want to say it in a negative way. It's just you can you can see the evolution of what mm-hmm. they can do now. Like yeah. it, it still has spots in it, so to speak. Like when when you'd watch a movie with special effects and you can tell, well, they filmed it from that angle because it's the only way they could. Mm-hmm. Or you know what I mean, like Spielberg sure. stuff a lot in that way. And with with that movie, it was still a little bit of that. Like yeah. okay, you can see they have to do it this way, and now there's really no no rules. Let's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, segue into comic books because you said before you like the old printed. Newsprint, yeah, yeah. I think. Now, for me, that's nostalgic, but I might be uh, going against myself because I love the the uh, glossy paper. Slick, thing. really? Absolutely. I would not have guessed that. I was, interesting. I but there again, crap's crap, but don't matter how it's yeah. printed. Yeah. You know yeah. what I, I... Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, co- I, compartmental, yeah. I compartmentalize it myself because, like, with back issues and things like that, I'm cool with newsprint. I mean, I just, you know, that's what I grew up with. It's part of the I experience. Like it. well, I guess I'm used to seeing but, Jack but Kirby then again, on newsprint. Though, so some new books that are shiny, some new books that are shiny, you know, you know, shiny and new, nice, the mm-hmm. nice, you know, new printing paper. I like it too, though. I mean, because it, it's just part of the evolution. But I mean, I love looking at old back issues that are newsprint. Well, I'll tell you, like, I had a, a Fantastic Four Masterworks, and it's one to one to ten. And I opened it, and I'd like it. just to get into the first one. I, I couldn't get on board because it was like this. There's Colors something about too right vibrant, about it. Aren't they? Yeah, it's like it, it's <laughs> shiny, and I'm like the first yeah, time man, I looked at my. I'll, I'll agree on that. The first time I looked at one, I'm like, 
because uh, I've a lot of the monster stuff that I liked in the seventies have been reprinted like more recently or in, in, in compilations. Yeah, and I'm like, going, oh, I mean, I just open them like they're just it. Uh, it just looks too. Mattel, uh, to Mattel. Yeah, but it, it goes. To, it goes oh. like uh, you know. We're just looking at the uh, the Cherokee, you know, the, the uh, Mego dolls. Yeah, you just take them for what they're worth. Yep, sure. You know, they're all the same body mm-hmm. with a goofy little uh, you yeah. know hand sewn outfit on them and stuff, and you know they're made with rubber bands. And then you see the McFarland figures, and you're like, I'm good with either one of them. Right. I understand yeah. that I'm looking at yeah. Mego dolls. Yeah, you yeah. Can, it's a product of its time and, right. and, and a product right. of your time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But the fact yeah. that McFarlane came around and, and just took it levels you yeah, know, I don't see in the you, right direction. I don't see you putting new gum bands on the McFarlane figures, but I've done, <laughs> yeah. I've done that on the Megas lots of times. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't okay. have any, I don't have a problem at all <laughs> well, with it. With for me it was the Masters of the Universe guys. I mean they basically had eight molds. And then they used those, that build for every character and popped a different head on it, you know. Right. Well, I've seen people customize some of the older figures because they just basically used that same body style. So people yeah. did, you know, made, created, you know, facial things or paints and different things. It's like, you know, that you could. I mean, it was easy to do, I guess. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, no, that's, that's 100% true. And in, in the computer coloring, everything, on it's, it's all good. I did a little yeah. research yeah. on that because I said that was going to be our homework for this year, or for this year, for this day, <laughs> this year. Today. Uh, yeah, today. Get it? Um, <laughs> wow, well, what the hell of a segue. <laughs> I'll call you back in an hour. Get it? Anyway, uh, we'll end your dice clay there. Um, get it? Bartender. Back. Hour back. Get it? Hey, you'd have to listen to that to understand it. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, uh, the image deal, you said the guy said it was probably the image when it blew up you know, with the, the, the good paper. Uh, it was like 90. Two ninety three. Everything was a buck ninety five. They had to jack the price up for that. Yeah. But Image was like the first mass, yeah. and Marvel did some deluxe X Men about the same time. Yeah. But uh, you said that uh, Dark Knight in eighty six, that was on that was on good quality paper too though. Yeah, one sitting but, right but here. But it was da- it was dabbling. They they didn't do it all the time. But when Image did it, everybody yeah. jumped on board. Well, and I think too that being a bound book as opposed to well, that exactly was, they call that the Dark Knight format and stuff, yeah, yeah. bookshelf yeah. format. Whenever people do that now, and I think DC was... did some Green Arrow stuff, like some real nice Grell stuff mm-hmm. um, well, with with that before Image was doing that kind of stuff too. So, huh. just but, a little bit of research well, I did, you know, this morning before I got here. And this might sound kind of dumb, nice. but it's not going to smell like a comic book twenty years from now, like right. the, those pages. Like to me, when you yep. break out one of those nineteen seventy one, like I gotta open that Champions number one from from I don't even remember what year, but seventy three, seventy four. Newsprint ink and carcinogens right there. And you <laughs> open it, and that smell. I'm it just smells like, like Granddad's attic. <laughs> No, I was just like, it's funny because I mean, you carried this. Yeah, I was, I was, I was waiting. <laughs> Attic. So I was like, what? Attic. No, but and everybody associates Attic. that with something Fish. different. But that's what your store smelled like when I'd walk in. I was like, oh man, and it, mm-hmm. it it's. It's, I don't know, within the confines of what we're doing here, maybe, there's a lot of people that make fun of me for saying that, but uh, I feel like I'm amongst friends when I can say, it's like, your comic book comes in, I smell it, it's like, I'm there. I can close my eyes and I'm standing in that room. Well, well and the thing is, is a lot of people, you know, Austin alluded to it, you read a lot of books online. Yeah. 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 I don't you know, what, can a, I don't know what a computer smells like. Yeah. You, you but, uh, it depends on who's been oh, using it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, oh. Zinga. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Not where I was going. You know, but I'm, sure, I'm we are. sure if you go to the candle store next door, they'll have something that smells like that newsprint. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah just like you know, hey, if they really want, exactly. If they corner, make some like old comic book. And that, that's <laughs> it, you know? Hey, hey nerds. They would open themselves to a whole new guys lined up out there. Hey, I'm nerd sign. Hey, nerds. You know, nerd ball. Old make your own smell like old old it's like Centerfold. On, on Facebook, they had a thing where you could order a candle. It was the Hills candle, and it was supposed to smell like Hills. The department store. Did oh, you yeah. see that? No. It has the logo on the side, and for like 20 bucks, they'll send you a Hills candle. I'm like, what does that smell like? Minimum <laughs> wage and defeat? Because I don't know. It would smell like soft pretzels and ices. <laughs> yeah, soft pretzels and three day old popcorn. <laughs> you get a whole sleeve for 15 cents. <laughs> if you like that, you'll love the Kmart candle. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Smells like blue light special to me. <laughs> blue light special. Oh, we'll get those little yarn balls going. <laughs> so what, I, I well, copy and pasted the questions, but I, we're all on the, what, the second one? What, do you guys remember what the third one was? The third one was the favorite Wolverine story. 
story. Mm. Oh man! Um, I'm gonna go off the grid and say my favorite Wolverine story was uh, Logan. The oh, movie, man, Logan. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the movie. Yeah. yeah, I think we're all on board. Yeah, with recent that. times for sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any other storylines. Um, the Days Future Weapon Past stuff. stuff when he's oh, the weapon stuff. Yeah, the Weapon X. One yeah, Days, yeah. I, I love Days Future Past. Yeah, yeah. those two books, those two X uncannies are awesome. Yeah, the Barry Windsor Smith Weapon X stuff. Yeah, the weapon. yeah. Uh, but the Old Man Logan comic that was that story yeah. was awesome. I picked up that trade. Well, I should say I ordered it and pick it up. I ordered it and opened the box and it was in there. And then I read it and then you came along and bought it. Yep, <laughs> yep. I had to have it. I yeah. think the um, Barry Windsor Smith stuff. I'm not sure. Marvel Comics Presents? Right, but I don't think that was 100% true. Because doesn't, hasn't they always, they've always alluded to the fact that this may not be how it actually happened? I'm not, I'm not a big enough fan of Wolverine, to be honest with you, to really know. Yeah, we I mean, need I, uh, someone like Les, because Les would uh, be down with that. He, he knows the history. More than what? Less? You out there, buddy? Want to <laughs> I'll tell you somebody else that call knows um, a shocking amount of Wolverine, and that's our buddy that comes in here, uh, David uh, Ketterman. Mm-hmm. Um, he is a dyed in the wool Wolverine fan, and comes in, and I mean, he just he amazes me with how much backlog he's got. As well, far all that, as all that, that origins and stuff, I don't. I know, I've read bits and pieces yeah. of origins, but I, I'd love to have that. Yeah. I'm looking I just think when he was Wolverine. introduced in Uncanny. I sort of thought he was douchey myself. <laughs> I really did. That's your favorite story. Uh, yeah, like, I did. Story. I just thought <laughs> he's got small man. He's got small man. He's got short man syndrome. You know, all the other, he's, even the female superheroes. Uh, you're talk, oh, you're special. talking about that. You're talking about that douche future past story. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm like, yeah, I wasn't douche. on. I wasn't on board with him. Oh, yeah. Stop us before we sub reference and pun again. Yeah, yeah I was not on board with him as a character. I mean, I was like, he's worth an ass. <laughs> 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 I wasn't a big fan. Oh, he's super cool. Like, yeah. Here's one. Did you guys see? I was reading a cracked article, you know, oh. online. Oh. It has to be true. <laughs> but they were talking about 10 properties that were mercilessly ripped off. And, I, man, I should have, I should have like, saved it. But it was saying that uh, DC Comics had a character that was basically Wolverine, but it didn't really go anywhere and only appeared a few times. And then... They then they made Wolverine and they didn't get back to it or whatever and they showed like a a, a clip of it and a, and it like like a couple panels of it and it was Wolverine like for sure I mean it was blatantly obvious and again it's a cracked article yeah, so, yeah. but yeah. I mean it's not the Inquirer I mean I, yeah. I never saw. heard anything like that. Yeah, yeah. never well ever. I'm gonna tell you now right. if you go to Image and get Blood Strike and then and, and Blood yeah. Blood and yeah. Strike Blood <laughs> Blood of and blood Strike blood. Strike but yeah wow. Yeah, well, you know what? That that's going to be my homework because this week I'm going to actually when we're done this I'm going to find it because okay. I just remember thinking, how did nobody point this out? Well, right. think I of this. Can't though. imagine. Uh, Len Wine worked for DC and Marvel. I knew that's where you were going. He did the whole who swamp said, thing, man. Who's, thing. Who, who's yeah? But who said that you know, he didn't try to maybe maybe he had some impact on pitching that there? I mean, I've never read it, but yeah. he did work for both companies, yep. yeah. and he is you know a co-creator of the character. I mean, he was you know he's. Credited yeah. with it. Well, when, when, with and the when they're done, when we're done yeah. here, I'll look it up. Just because he worked for both companies, right. was was accepted as, as you know, he was one of those guys that could cut across from DC to Marvel. He was you know always well, respected by everybody in the, in the business, pretty right. much. But, but yeah, if that could be a possibility, I don't know if that's the answer. But that's when you said that, I thought about There's that. There's your homework for next week. It, you know? Yeah, I saw uh, I saw online that the, 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 there was a company backing CGC that's going to do another McFarlane sale, where they guarantee the signature on the CGC thing. Mm-hmm. I think the thing that you had done, mm-hmm. they do it twice a year. Yep. And um, they said that it was, uh, I want to say it was like $125, maybe $150 now. I'm not, wow. Yeah. It's, it didn't it's, cost that much when we went to K's. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Speaking of. Uh, but yeah, uh, well, they well, said that's that. That's a lot more than I did pay for. Well, and somebody <laughs> was saying, you know, well, how's McFarland charging that much? And, it, and they made, went in there and said it's free for McFarland to sign stuff. Um He'll sign whatever you want, like if you see him at a show. Like, yes. And it actually said, just walk up to him with a pen and he'll sign it for It's like, first of all, nobody's walking up yeah. to Tom McFarlane at a comic convention. Like, you might walk well, up to him. you're in the line of yeah. 300 yeah. people, you get yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they slowly up Yeah, there. you're going to walk yeah. real yeah. slow. But they said he doesn't charge for his nope. autograph, and if you nope. don't want it, like, CGC nope. certified, nope. you can send in whatever you want, and it's just 50 bucks, and that's what they charge yeah. for dealing with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and sending it back to you. And all yeah, that yeah, well. yeah. That yeah. includes. But I mean, that seems. I mean, for McFarland, that seems a little more reasonable. If you're not trying to get a CGC to spend fifty bucks, and you can drop yep. your book in the mail, and they'll take yep. it, make sure he signs it where you want, yep. 
pack it and send it back to you. That's it'll it'll have a cert too. I mean, the yeah. reason mine doesn't have a cert is because my I went ahead for the whole process and it's mine's CGC cert, it's the signature series, right? But it has the date when he did it. Yeah, he just they, they go out there. Um, they go to Arizona like twice a year. They go like in the winter time and I think like a the summer or late spring and summer and just. They they post it, you know. I, I just found it online. Yeah. And I said I've always wanted it. I'm like, you know what? And I have a real nice copy of those homage books. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do this because I want it. And, well, and how and, is that different than uh, paying for Neil Adams' autograph? So uh, people I think, do that. I think there's a a, a big part of the Neil Adams. <laughs> I mean, he's going to sign it for free, and then you going to cost you fifty dollars to package it up. I think the big thing is Neil. The combination of Neil Adams being at those shows all the time, so there's this, at least to me, there's this perception that he's harder to get a hold of. I think Tom McFarlane is a bigger deal, like, bigger mass appeal than him, and also... I've never seen Todd McFarlane act like a giant asshole. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not saying well, yeah, I, don't, I don't want to get into the uh, personalities and stuff, but you know. Well, they, unfortunately for me, that's I. Yeah. I wish that wasn't well, part of it, but it is. When like, he does shit, when McFarlane, first of all, when McFarlane does shows, they're they're few and far between now. Sure, he only does like maybe sure. five to seven shows a year tops, well, if if that, and. I don't know. I don't think it's ever slowed down. But anytime I've ever read anything on it, his lines are huge all the time. Now they are free, and he and they say he sits and stays and doesn't. Oh, that's what he's always doesn't said. move. Just, he, yeah. I mean, seriously, he one literally, bath, you know, yep. a bathroom break. But other than that, he just sits and there blows him out and, do, and not a penny. Shakes your hand, hey, you know, you know, yeah. get a signature. You know, I don't even know if there's a limitation or might with him there might be a limitation because there's so many people. Mm-hmm. But it the, may be one book or whatever. But the it's venom, free. The venom, mm-hmm. you know, the yeah. Spidey three hundreds. Bobby, he's signed them all day long. Oh. Well, and and the other thing, too, is he doesn't do that CGC in person anymore. He'll only just sign it to sign that's it. That's why. That's that's yeah. his whole thing. He's like, I do not. I mean, that's it's up in his convention thing. I but, do this twice a year. I don't do this at shows. So, you know. Right. But to, but even from a retailer standpoint, the difference between Neil, Neil Adams and Todd McFarlane is I still think at 50 bucks, that's a pretty decent investment. Because if I pack up whatever, I mean, pick out spawn number one, and which you can get for 6 or $7 in <coughs> damn near perfect condition. <laughs> if I pack up two of those books and then ship them and spend 100 bucks, and they come back signed by McFarlane with a certificate of authenticity, I can set them in this little store for 75 or $100 each, and I'm going to sell them. I, can, I mean, I believe that. I can attest that because I got a spawn number one signed at a convention with the certificate of authenticity, and it was it was 60 bucks. Yeah. So... And, 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 you and, it's in great, and you've seen it; it's in great yeah, condition. It is, and you didn't meet him. No, like you weren't paying sixty to get near him. You paid sixty because you knew for a fact right. he signed it. Right, and that was how many years I, ago? Like two years ago. So, I took so. I took a gamble because I didn't know what the I knew the book was nice when I sent it. I only paid twenty dollars for the book, it's which is awesome. Covers. Yeah, I, but I did, and it came back at nine eight, which really I I, I, that's awesome. I was like I was that's awesome. But I still took a little bit of a you know I'm like going yeah, and I and to be honest with you, I didn't care if it was like a nine or I knew it was a nicer book. I really didn't care. I just wanted, just wanted I it. Wanted it. Wanted it. <laughs> I yeah. wanted it. I'm yeah. just playing it. it. There was an avenue for me to do it. The very the least amount of work I did, I packaged it up and mailed it, and that was the end of it for me. Yeah, it came to my well, house like a, a couple months later. It came to my house. <laughs> boom. And, boom. Yeah. and they said like Infinity War is going to be approaching two billion dollars. There's no sign of any of this going away. Yeah, and and to have you know guys like that. I mean, Spawn movie is going to be coming out. The Venom movie's out. Tom McFarlane's name on book, I think, is only going up. It's only going to be something more sought after. Mm-hmm. There'll come a time where you might be able to buy a car with that, that spawn number one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that movie comes out, what, next summer, I think, is what they spawn? were talking yeah. I think it comes out this this October, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, so if that movie hits riding off the coattails of all the success of all these movies, yeah. and it makes 300 or $400 million, and you have a copy of Spawn Number 1 mm-hmm. signed by McFarlane with a certificate of authenticity, who's to say that book in a world where amazing at a 9.8... I saw sell for twelve hundred dollars, like not even signed. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, but it, that fervor and, and all that excitement, enthusiasm. Who's to say that well, five a, years from now you can't buy yeah. a car when they're on Spawn Four? Well, yeah. it's a double. It's a double whammy for him too with Venom and that. Both of them coming out at the same time. Yeah. That's a double hit for. I mean, that's yeah. like, you know, that just increases. Yeah, you know the the Todd fervor, so to speak. Yeah. His legitimacy. <laughs> yeah, the legitimacy of it all is is staggering. But you come to find he's a pretty I'm decent. Sad. Anything I've ever read on him, he's a decent guy too. That's yeah. another thing that goes along with it. He's mm-hmm. he's been he's been definitely 
definitely cool with the fan community and, and just in general. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's been to the house. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's been to the lease ranch. Yeah. <laughs> Signed a couple things for me. Signed some Volkswagen. <laughs> Eventually you give up the ghost. You're like, okay, it was via satellite. But <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah. But, um. <laughs> Where do you yeah. go with that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Where, I mean, uh, from, get from Tom McFarlane hanging out at Tim's yeah. house, I mean, it feels downhill yeah, from there. Just, any of us. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. You, know. you too. Why is he, he still on the show? <laughs> he didn't sign anything that he did. He just went around the house and just started writing on yeah. stuff. <laughs> Signed my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does listen to these? <laughs> That's like uh, my buddy Brian, uh, when he gave Ric Flair a ride from our show, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to have him go ahead and sign the dashboard of my car. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Can't beat that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's take good stuff. Take his picture in the passenger seat. Yeah. Was so, really um, we're going to take Ditko off the table, but who's left that you guys haven't ever met that you'd like to meet? I'd like to meet Jeff Darrow. That's a good one. Yeah. Even though I have things signed and I've meet, actually, you know, conversed Kramer's with wheels family retiring. members, I'd like to meet Rich Cork. Kramer's wheels Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that'd be yeah, good. Yeah, I'd like Corbin to meet him. I'd love to meet him. I mean, I, you know, I have I'm, stuff. I should have thrown... Taking Kelly Jones off the table too because I'm sure everybody's on board. Have you guys ever met him? No. No. In California, as of the moment, we're Facebook friends. Yes. <laughs> I saw a picture of his cat the other day. Me too. Yeah. Yet we haven't met him in a convention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a picture of the cat. You're like, me too. <laughs> I was there. It's like that. Simpsons. Maybe we looked at it at the same time. Hey, here's here's one. A quick Simpsons <laughs> reference. It's like that time on the Simpsons when Bart brings his dog for show and tell, and everybody's like swooning over yeah. Millhouse goes. I knew the dog before he came to class. <laughs> Good time. Uh, Michael Sam's Gilbert from help. Mr. Monster. There you he's go. He's from Seattle, and he's there you go. never been around here that I know of. Wow. And there again, he responds all the time. You know, I message him, and he right back all the time. Yeah. Alex, Very Alex cool. he knows on my list, too. And he just doesn't. He doesn't do. He, he does stuff because he, he resides in California. He does things out there, but he doesn't come to the East Coast. Either. How about you, Skillet? Uh, Mark Bagley. Yeah. Down. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my number one right now. Yeah, but it's still I, alive. I got a lot of Bagley stuff that I would like. To prior have to seen. Bagley, it would have been um, Paul Ryan, yeah. and prior to that, it would have been Eric Larson, who I got to meet, and Stan Lee, who I got to meet. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arthur Adams is going to be pretty cool for me in Baltimore this oh, year. Yeah. I, I, he's been a long, long-standing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, would have hmm. loved to. Uh, I don't. I can't remember or recall the time that we've been to show and all the years we've gone to shows that he was ever at one before, so I'm, that I can remember. I'll we were, tell you who I'd like to meet. I'd like to meet Al Jaff. Oh, cool, yeah. I'd like to meet him. He's still kicking me. Yeah, some of the old-timers. He's in his 90s, man. Yeah. Was he somewhere last year, too? Yeah, I think so. I don't remember. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. It's like East Coast or something, Jersey yeah. or something like that. Mostly we were the Pittsburgh show before it moved from the Expo Mart over to the new place. And I was standing alone with my buddy Sean Henry. And we are standing there, and we'd been together for two straight days. And you know how you're going to get on anybody's nerves in two days. Some people say I get on their nerves after an hour or two. Not naming any <laughs> names, Tim. But um, we, uh, we're standing in line, great. and I, I, I'm just... I'm running off at the mound. I'm like, oh, you know, who are you taking? Blah, 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 and ask all these questions. I was like, okay, so if you can meet anybody, you know, who would it be? Who would you be? Who would you be your pick? Who is it? And he turns out and looks at me. He goes, Tony Millionaire that does Sock Monkey. He's standing right here, and it's my turn. So can you just give me a second? Like, yeah, sorry. Oh, um, how the this? Beasley. Yeah. yeah. Simon Beasley. Yeah. He's never been to Baltimore. Sinkevich Sinca- 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 would be on my list. We'll have to too. get on that. Bill Sinkevich for sure. Me. Make it happen. Did you ever meet the guy that did uh, Too Much Coffee Man? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Yeah. Shane Wheeler? Yeah, Shane Wheeler. Yeah, Wheeler. He was uh, there the year I was there. Did you meet Alvin Dorkin, too? Flaming Carrot guy. Did... Oh, yeah. I'd like to meet you. Yeah, Bob's, Bob... Bob's been in. Uh, he was at the Yeah, Bob used Con. to do shit. I'd like to, I'd like to meet yeah. Bob, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He was out in the middle of a couple of years. How about Johan Vasquez? That, yeah, that would be cool. Would that be awesome? Yeah. He was, uh, Does anybody know who that is out there in the comic yeah. book world? In <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. He was, uh, he was at uh, American Comics in Georgetown, and I was not allowed to go because my first son, was my first child was being born, <laughs> or within a week of that. Got out of priorities. He was due, so I could <laughs> yeah. not... 
priorities. I could not go because I was going to go down just for a trip. And I could just, see me staying home too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All but, but yeah, he was just down there just doing it because he's from San Jose, I think, or out in California. And he was on a, uh, I think he had a Volkswagen bug and he was touring the United States. Mm-hmm. I like he, he was in now. Georgetown and stuff. And uh, I just, it killed me, but I couldn't go. In 2003, I met uh, Joe Quisada was at the Pittsburgh show. I'm standing there, and I had a Paul McCartney shirt on because I saw Paul in September of '02 at the back in the U.S. tour, and uh, came down. and He's like, "Oh man, that shirt, dude! Did you get to see him?" I was like, "Yeah, I saw him in uh, D.C." He's like, "I was like, did you? You're a big fan." He's like, "I'm a huge fan, and I have tickets to see him, but it's for today, and I'm here." <laughs> Just like, like that, I went, can you sign this? I went. He's like, "Did he do any Beatles stuff?" I mean, that's before internet. He's like, "Did he do any Beatles stuff?" I was like, "Do you really want to know?" I was like, "He played five original songs, like solo stuff, and everything on that that tour was Beatles stuff." He went, "Alrighty, well, nice meeting you. Thanks for ruining my day." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with a, with I, I a like smile. Him. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff would be somebody because I love his work. And he was super. I mean, he was nice. It was just funny. Like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> he's he's one of the guys that I wish would get more work. I know he's yeah, busy that'd be great. doing executive stuff, but it's spectacular. There's so. some newer guys, though, that I mean, I've been picking up stuff that I read. There's a, a, a Filipino guy, uh, uh, Lanil Francis Yu. I like a lot of his stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Salvador La Roca, he's done some X-Men stuff. and did some, he's, They're, to me, newer guys that I really like a lot. It would be really cool to Who see. Who was it that just did that Wolverine number one? That stuff was solid. Uh, is that, that that wasn't somebody that was kind of already in our mm-hmm. in our mind's eye. Did, I can't even remember. Well, but, I, I mean, you, the work was incredible. I'll tell you, I, was on my, I tell you it was on my... Venom number one that Venom, came oh, out. Oh, Ryan Stegman. Yeah, he's on my. He's on the radar yeah. now. After I saw that first issue, I'm like, damn, that's really good. You were looking work. at those Wolverine books when you said that, weren't you? <laughs> so, I, well, I was like looking over because that's where it, the book said. Yeah. Venom said. I was like, oh, I don't have one. <laughs> George is not having a stroke, everybody. Right? <laughs> yeah, that, that work on that first Venom smell burnt toast. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> smell burnt incense. Yeah. It's right here. Oh, yeah. I'll just throw that out there. I... I uh, Burn incense in the comic store two days out of the year. The one day is on, which is today, is the anniversary of the first time I walked into Paperback Exchange. It was that big of a deal that I'm aware of the date. Uh, the second one was um, when uh, Kay passed away, which was um, actually two days before I opened the store. I was say, we so talked about little, it the almost, first day. Yeah. first day I went into your store, we talked about it. Yeah, yeah. So um, two days a year, just uh, in honor of Kay, uh, the memory of Kay, because, you know, we try to, I try to, Pay some homage to Calling All Heroes comics, to Kramer's comics back in the day. And when when uh, that was no longer there, I think we all jumped over to paperback. And there was a lot of cool things there. She was she was I, very interesting. I person. lived out of town when you were working yeah. there. And I, when I would come and visit my folks, I'd stop in there first yeah. before I'd even go home. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I've I told, spent a lot of time in there. I've said this before. Donnie, I don't know if you were here when I said it, so I'm going to repeat it real quick. And there was one time I looked at it, I was like, 14 or 15 and I come in and I'm like oh, do you have the new Fantastic Four <laughs> the Fantastic Four 371 on here <laughs> or whatever and she just looked at me and serious heart attack went no but I just got a book that shows you how to massage a cat's paw because <laughs> that's the same <laughs> like that was like the backup like no but I have this collection no it's, I mean it's here's just a cat massage <laughs> I mean is it signed because you know I'll have that <laughs> we, we, we printed a, a comic book me and my friends when we were in probably the ninth grade we were like each printed up our own comic book and I remember going down to commercial press and it being like just as serious as anything it's like how much is it going to cost to put 12 pages and staple it together how much is you going to need and you know and they were trying to figure out what the cover price will have to be to cover it and this and that yeah. and, and I remember taking them up to her and it was literally just stapled paper that they made me like 20 copies of and I numbered them 1 to 20 the ash I took him cans. one and I took I went yeah. up the, I was like look at this and tell me what you think <laughs> I, I remember just leaving like <laughs> <laughs> if he hates it I'll just die <laughs> All the millions and millions yeah. of dollars well, you're gonna make. And the thing about it was, and and <laughs> I'm just throwing it up there is like, I've known Gary since I was 13, and when the thing that uh, one of the big things that always drew me to you was you always talked to me. You were talking down. You were always talking to me like, like I'm a professional. Like even though I'm still not, <laughs> but like at that time you always talked to me like. There's a level that this has to be on, and everybody else in my life at the age of 13 is telling you what to do or giving you crap or or whatever, like yep. teachers, and it was just like, 
man, you walk in and it's all of a sudden like he's talking to me, not down to me, just talking to me. And, just and talking at you. it was like a big deal. And like I use that as a lot of, of motivation to try to try to do a good job and turn in because I knew he was going to be straight up with me with whatever it was I did. Well, I took it up to her. I was like, the cover price is $1. fifty. Can you sell this? She went, yep, but I'm going to need 30 cents of it. <laughs> <laughs> Serious heart attack. And I was like, oh, okay. She's like, I'm running a business here. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I was like, like, who the F do you think you are? Not, that space isn't free. I pay for that rent, too. And I was like, okay. And I remember coming up like each week to get my comics or whatever. And I'm like, did anyone sell? She's like, we sold two. So, 60 cents to me. Here's your, you know, $2.20 or whatever. And I just remember feeling like, okay, this is like, this is how this works. It's working. So, anyway. Um, yeah, hats off to Cass. That's cool, yep. Yep. <laughs> It's funny. Large. I mean, it, it was funny. Some days you come in, she's real super animated. Other days you come in, they'll be like, "Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch anything." <laughs> that's gold. Yeah, that's also back when you could smoke, and she smoked in there. I can remember. Yeah. I know she smoked. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah she oh, was all the time. Yeah, buddy. Fired yeah. him up. Yeah, <laughs> sure. She looked it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. doing the Luke's, that, that was an adventure. Last time I was at Luke's was an adventure. Yeah. yeah it was winter time, and he was dragging around a heater. Yep. Like, you know, I'm like, this is like a tinder box full of things yep. that could burn up. <laughs> He's dragging a heater around, you know, heat in the store. I'm like, all right, where's the exit? Yeah. I have a safe and way course, out of uh, it. Safe way new out places of course, Carl, nice Ott's Trading Post. Right. Oh, Ott's. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah, you feel like you want to take a shower before you come home. <laughs> Remember we go to the pizza joint and eat, and, like, and you, you go in the bathroom, and the water would be black. Oh. It was like, it was, and I'm not exactly, it was yeah. black. I'll tell you, the first time I went to Ott's, because of the holidays, bro, <laughs> Kramer told me where it was as the honey hole, man. You know, he used yep. to tell me all about it, and it's, he said, don't go in with high expectations, but when you go... He's like, make sure you take a box of like hand wipes with you. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, <laughs> it's like what are you? Yeah, Mike, take the, we're, we're, gonna, going? we're definitely gonna need some conversation con- 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 soon because take, if you're going to the honey hole and they told you to bring hand wipes, <laughs> I need you to clarify what yeah, just what yeah. the hell you're talking about. A honey hole comic book. It's because you're, <laughs> okay. you're sick man. <laughs> sick. Hey, but, but as is some of our listeners, not really, yeah. but some of them. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, when you come out of there, it looked like you're in the coal mine. Yep. And your hands were just like black because it was just so dirty. But there was uh, some good stuff there. I got some good stuff. It's hard It's hard to describe because the books were all in great shape. You know, but yeah, your hands just got filthy. Just shelves. But the shelves. building was, all the place was no dusty. No organization. That place was, yeah, but that place was an old, like, old building. Yeah. The thing, though, the, the amazing story, though, is the, the, the showcase. Showcase had Hulk number one and Amazing Fantasy fifteen. Yeah, oh, that, I remember that, that, story, that story. That's where that happened. The, the story water, ends. The water, I guess, trickled down and got into it. And, the story and, ends badly. Yeah. Mm. Our dear friend Bill Smith was like, uh, "Hey, Carl, uh, you better take a look at these uh, books over here." He's like, "Uh huh." You know, he's like, "Uh huh." Uh-huh. You better take a look at them. I mean, they apparently, were ruined. Yeah, ruined. like mold on one. Oh mm. man, I mean, the water got inside it. Got in the case three. There was another book there. It was a major yep. book. But, it was a DC. I mean, it was a big Spider-Man, DC book. Oh, I know. It was, uh, I, oh, it was the first Justice League. They had the first Justice League, first Hulk, <laughs> Amazing Fantasy 15. And they weren't They weren't near mint, but they weren't dish rags either. They were like mid <laughs> They were now, huh? They were water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as far as collectability, they were like mid-liners. They'd be worth oh, like hundreds tens of thousands, thousands of yeah. dollars yeah. right now. I don't think a yeah. pressing could have helped them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ringing out in the pressing. Yeah, because they were they were in a bag, so it was running through yeah. the ringer. Uh, you just looked oh. at them, you're like, oh, oh, oh. yeah. That's yeah a didn't you say he like, started crying? Hear about. Didn't you say yeah. started crying? It's amazing. He got some great, great books in there all the time. Yeah, all there the time. was zero organization though. It was just everywhere. Well, now he, he kept some really nice stuff though in his like he had one of those old metal desks, and he, in a drawer he used to keep mm-hmm. like some people would set stuff back, some you know nicer stuff. I get mm-hmm. you know, high, but I don't know. I found a lot of really cool back issues in there. Yeah. I had a, a bunch of Hulks from there that were like freaking brand new. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're like mid late sixties Hulk, seventies Hulks. They were. And that's, like, that's another nostalgic thing. We have yeah. the, the backing boards that you know is address. And yeah, I, have a I, I come across them every yeah. now and again. The holidays burn. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. both yeah. corners. I have a couple of them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for all the joking, he had some great books. And he gave you incredible yeah. deals. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I walked bulk, out bulk there. deals. We need to find yeah. another odds. Yeah. <laughs> Go shop and fill up your store. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. That was a, I'd say off. in our lifetime, that was, <laughs> yeah. that's sort of a once in a lifetime thing, man. Mm-hmm. It was just a once in a lifetime thing. It was, and it was, it was, I love going there. Now that pizza place was good too, man. Wash your hands, that's a pizza. <laughs> I was never hungry after I left the, there. In the glow of no. your looks, no, and I never had any money after I left there. <laughs> so it worked out. Yeah, Chip, Chip and I, Chip and I made the journey one time. I took Sandy there once. I was a mistake. That's bad news. I don't know. There was a motorcycle right in the middle. Of yeah, the yeah. The Sandy's it like, a, I got, it was a. <laughs> and it was the last place that they, like an old they renovated. Motorcycle. They renovated right yeah, in the middle. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole uh, they renovated sort of like they did with Cumberland. Yeah. They fixed everything every up. Every building. Then there's, there's Carl in the except corner. For the, <laughs> the one holdout. And you look yeah. inside there and you sort of wipe off the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like this. Is he in there? my own. It's like the entire north end of town's property value is going down because yeah. you're here. <laughs> yeah. And yet you house the most valuable stuff of any of them. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's uh, cool though. Yeah, Although, yeah, the one wall was not, the one wall was just loaded with like three hundred count boxes, just loaded. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. just rungs Sh- shelves and shelves, yeah. rungs of them. Yeah. It would take it would take you two days just to go through, yeah. like even like hit the. Oh, we spent. We were there for like three and four hours, yeah. and you wow. were not even close to being. Yeah, you weren't even scratching anything. Good but, leg cramps, but they were alf- they were alphabetized. But you're, t- I mean, it was like wow. Yeah. Building was long, old, long building. It was a lot of. It was a lot. And you'd be coming across all of a sudden a porn magazine to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, how much is this? Yeah. Speaking of that, the, speaking of that, the hand towels in the honey hole. Why? Speaking, speaking of that, the, you know, the our true story though. Uh, you'd be like, bring back a chip. Do 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 do. Then you're like, oh, you know, that's wives that do. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's gold. True story. And of course, Carl would always be because he worked in the yeah. factory, so he'd come in there. Yeah. He's sort of a bear guy, burly guy. Yeah, big burly sort of like, man. Sort of looked like George. <laughs> just, just put George in a pair of coveralls. Yeah. yeah. But they're very dirty. Because yeah. he had big curly With hair. a much better work ethic. Yeah. And a beard and glasses. Yeah, yeah. beard and glasses. But big, he, yeah, he was a big burly man, man. Yeah, like like uh-huh. <laughs> Tim does this thing to me from uh, from Billy Madison. If you remember the uh, the principal... In Billy Madison, who turns out to be the blob from, yeah. uh, <laughs> there's a point where he gives Billy Madison a, a Valentine, Valentine. Yeah. and he takes his glasses off, and yeah. like, Billy looks up and sees him and makes that face, and he can't see it, but yeah. do it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, why am I asking for that? <laughs> makes me question things about myself. <laughs> hey, hey, we got a face for radio. What can I say? <laughs> We're talking about the, the skin book in the odds, oh, you know, like seg- <laughs> Segways into the water. Well, I know we left it behind. Uh, back to the now. skin book at <laughs> Ox. Uh, literally took all uh, the lipstick off that pig, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> like, wipe that off. The old one-hander. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Get in there. Kramer's laughing. Are you getting this? <laughs> so, one, Chip, right Chip and I made a journey up there one time. So, literally saved all our money at the time working at <laughs> folks. There's a throwback for you. Um, I, I think I spent like $150 on, on Spider-Man. Amazing. Wow. I bought like, and That's that like was like $150, 1985 dollars. Yeah, that was, that was 90, <laughs> oh, okay. 91. I was married. Yeah, it was in I, the, I don't know. Yeah, it was in the early yeah, 90s. Uh, yeah. 94, 95 yeah. is when he yep. yeah. disappeared. Yeah, it was and, in the early and Chip 90s. Spent, and Chip spent all his dollars on, on Batman. <laughs> and we literally, we, we couldn't hardly drive home. We were like wanting to stop and read these books on the way home. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we had the, the old dirty hand syndrome. Well, he comes in here, he spends all his dollars on Batman. <laughs> True. So things haven't. And changed. that's what's cool, uh, you know, with uh, Baltimore Comic Con. When we leave there, <laughs> you want to go through all the stuff mm-hmm. that, and share with other people. Yep. I mean, yeah, oh, even yeah. at my age, it yep. never gets old. Yeah. yeah. What'd well, you ever, get? Hey, ever. what'd you get? Hey, guess look what I found. Yep. I mean, we're, we run yeah. into each other. That's why hey, I brought this get? today. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hey, I found this. Oh, hey, that's heavy. That's the first fun part about getting something new. Is like. Check this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got some And of course, like I said, it, it's never in a bragging way. It's no. so you're proud to own right. something. Oh, no, no, it's not bragging. Oh, you're excited. Morning. You want to share your excitement. Hey, look at yeah. right. oh, oh, yeah. dude, I wanted this for a long time. Look, I found it. You know? Well, it's like Christmas morning, uh, only you get to pick what you want, and all your friends are there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, how does it get any better? Yeah. Yeah. Look what I got. I don't yeah. have to feel bad about bragging because I want to see what you got, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you just look at it? It's the spirit of buying, and it's touched us all. There's no going back. It really isn't. Well, God, it's it's, it's only 130 <laughs> odd days away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's shaping up to be a nice one for oh, a while yeah. there. Because I start looking like the day after what the guests are going to be. It's like, you can announce who's coming. 
Mm-hmm. It's getting better. Well, I'm pretty excited because I've, I've always said, you know, I've got a lot of artist signatures, and there's some writers that I really follow or like a lot. Yeah. Garth Ennis and Brian Azzarello are going to be there. I didn't know Garth Ennis was going to be there. Dang. That's cool. Scott Snyder. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah, some big ones. Yeah. Did uh, any of you guys, have you guys been to all these lately and looked at their books? I know you go there on the regular. Sometimes I, yeah, stop. Well, now, got, now that I'm up, not all our business is in my day show job is in LaVale anywhere and goes. Much of they just got a pile of books in. I mean, like a, like a lot of DC stuff, yeah. but there's a little bit of Marvel stuff in there. Yeah. And it's not just the comic book packs, you know, you're right. really rolling the dice, you know, buying the $5 worth of books and you know what, two of them are. I've got that Corbin... Hellboy. Hellboy, you know, yeah. the hardback for like two ninety. dollars And I, I did a little show. Like, wow. Even though I had it, I'm like, well, that's... You can't really pass it up. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. Did a little I show one tell. of my cousins. I got this, uh, it's a DC publication, but it's got a lot, a lot of 70s stuff in it. And it's all black and white and stuff. It's, it's decent art. It's really neat. But three bucks. I mean, you can't, you can't yep. pass that up. Mm-hmm. But they had a lot of they had a lot of cool stuff there when I was there the other day, and I've seen a lot of stuff on on the comic book Facebook pages of people saying they've been going to yeah. hitting up all the all these places. I mean, for for the price, not taken away from your store, but <laughs> oh, no, um, right. it's uh, they got a lot of nice stuff there. Well, Jerry, you spoke many times about everything. getting incredible deals on trade paperbacks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, they're Diamond just unloads them, and yeah, and they're they're doing a lot of that. That's I think where they're getting it from. And I think that's cool. And there's some stuff out there that I just want to read. Right. I don't right. need to have the individual. Yep, sure. Some of it I, I'm fanatical about yeah. getting well, every and, issue, getting get because I like to put them up on the wall and yeah. you know have the individual. But sure. sometimes it's just like, hey, trade paperback. Just Especially John, Donnie being younger, it's like you know the the original Mysterio, the, mm-hmm. the tattoo on your arm. It's like, hey, I just want to read it. Yeah. Yep. I do not want to spend 175 dollars for a decent copy of it. I yeah. just want to read it. I saw, I went to Baltimore Comic Con, since you mentioned the first appearance of Mysterio, I saw, like, somebody had the first appearance of Mysterio at Baltimore Comic Con last time I went. I was like, I can't afford it, but can I just, like, hold it, just so I can, like, look, look, so I can just look at the cover. And that's what we were talking about with all its trading posts, where you sit there and you got book number one. You have Amazing Fantasy. Number 13. It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, Back in uh, 85, 86, the first action yeah. mm-hmm. and Detective got, 27 were there and I was allowed to actually yeah, we hold got the whole, I hold first action you know but there again these books weren't the 100,000 200 that's a big deal nine. that's a big deal and to actually hold them back then and stuff that was yeah. it's like can I just hold can that can I just look yeah, at it? it it's almost like you're in a weird way it's it's that same feeling you get I think the same part of your brain lights up is when you meet a celebrity yeah it's like yeah. I'm holding Amazing Spider-Man or Fantastic Four number one when I held that book it's like it was so Mythic, you know, like in my mind, like to hold it in my hand. It really exists. And you it's can like hold here it. it is. I've got it, and this is a moment I'll remember. Like I remember what I was doing and where I was at, and I got to hold it, the same as if I got to, yeah. you know, meet Christopher Lloyd in front of a DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just cool. Yeah. I saw some early Mads when I was out at um, Sandy's uh, stem cell procedure and went to that Southern California Comics. Yeah, that was that's the first thing oh, I did. I bought books. That's the first so thing I did when I found out that's where we were going. I'm like, <laughs> I typed it in. I'm like, comics nearby. Yeah, and I bought it was like ten him. miles cool. from where we were going to be staying. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm going there. Oh, he's, yeah. he's really and cool. I I got to uh, yeah I got to meet the guy yep. and uh, Jamie is his name. Yep, and um, friends on Facebook. But <laughs> I got to um, got to hold like the first three or four issues of Mad. You know, mm-hmm. like the I mean they were in Mylar and everything. I'm just like, and he had all all that that cool stuff was in these big uh, metal filing cabinets. You know, in the That's corner. sweet. How yeah. much was the number one? Do you remember? I don't even remember. I don't remember what. I, obviously, I couldn't afford it, but uh, yeah, but it's funny. Like I said, if neat. you didn't get to these way back then, you're not going to touch it. Right. Action number one. Right. Right. Nobody's, like, yeah, or, nobody's or letting you hold that now. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And uh, it's like it's, it's over there, but you ain't touching it. Yeah. Thing. And, yeah. Uh, that's really cool to uh, actually get your hands on books that you've heard about forever. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> so I folded it. Jammed in the back cover. <laughs> Said, we'll see you later. Got, got, out, got out the back cover and put the, put the errors together. Got, got any TODs? Yeah. yeah. It was a great episode of Comic Book Man a couple years ago where a guy came in with all these Golden Age Batmans and it was like, remember, like the 30s and 40s, like Detective 35, 6, 7, like those early ones. And they were in bags and those guys held them and they're like, we cannot afford to buy this from you, but it was such an honor to even hold it in your hand. It's like, where else are you going to hold that? Kind of like, kind of like when Static came down. Yeah, Batman. Batman. Yeah, three. He had Batman three. Uh, three. Back in the day. Really? Wow. Oh yeah. It was taped. It was. Uh, but I had it. Hmm. Oh yeah, the corners were rough on them, but that was yeah. so cool. Well, like Gary C coming in here with the first year of Amazing Spider-Man, just throwing it on the counter. <laughs> just like what? 
Like, yeah, because you're thinking, did you just do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he just tossed them down, and they were in bags that, I mean, they weren't horrible, but I was like, i got to put all this in my alarm. Well, like, it, it, oh. as, as I always say, the spirit of comic books is, is alive in Tim and stuff, just, yep. you know, the Tim Lee's edition. Collection. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, yeah, you don't throw the first ten <laughs> Spider-Mans down. That's that's not the spirit of anything. <laughs> I, but he, these, I mean, he bought them these lying off around. The stands. He bought them new. Yeah. I mean, he had literally like. I mean, don't get me wrong. That that's great, but wow. Yeah, yeah it was like one. Wow. To, what was it? Like one to twelve or one to thirteen? Yeah, it was easily the first. He one. just flopped them down like they were Alpha Flight. <laughs> and I picked them up. And when I picked the one up, the first one I picked up was like number two, and I was like. Oh, hands were shaking. I was like, <laughs> like, all right, but, we gotta, that, but isn't that cool? Scene? It really was, and and I was I was amazed by it. And then I was also like, we gotta get this out of these crappy bags. Like, how long has it been since you've changed these bags? I was like, I'll get you some mylar. And he's like, oh, well, how much does that run? I was like, it, it's free today. It, it's free today. Yeah, like the fact that I get to put it in mylar is my payment. Like, I'll <laughs> I'll take yours for you. He's like, well, they do look a lot better. I'm like. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> How about that? It those was books, awesome, those though. Those books are so much bigger than the new ones. Yeah, yeah they are. You better, you know, you can't have a modern jack, especially the quarter yeah. books oh, and the stuff. Oh, the 50s books. The 50s horror books are mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. Well, and I think it's, and, and the price goes up, and, mm-hmm. like, what you get goes down. Fewer pages, smaller pages. Sure. It's like it's like ice cream. It used to be a half a gallon, <laughs> and then they whittle it down, and then they put that little dent in the bottom, and yeah. <laughs> pretty soon it'll, we'll just basically all be walking like around champagne. with those little Archie books. <laughs> oh, Ben and Jerry. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, six bucks for two bites, and on yeah. the back it says six servings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Recommended service. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've like, done the math. Thanks. I'll recommend my own serving. <laughs> well done, yeah. This is my serving. Well, gentlemen, I believe the comic store is about five or six minutes late in opening. Uh oh, Omics. Omics. You know, I was I was cleaning up. I had a box of stuff. I took it home. My wife's like, "Why did you get a C with lights on it?" I'm like, oh, I got to take it back to the comic store. I keep Omics. forgetting. Yeah, I don't think you should. Just Fine. leave it like that. It's a conversation piece. Builds character. Yeah. Yep. That's All gonna right. be my next store. I'm gonna open one in Frostburg. I'm gonna call it Amers Omics. <laughs> nice. nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> on that note. I think this is a very vociferous episode. <laughs> <laughs> Rarudo, those are Z's. <laughs> On that note, um, I'm George, and I was joined today by Donnie, <laughs> Walls, <laughs> Gary, Tim. You guys sound so like down. Tim, we're sad. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. over, man. The show's ending. Had a good time today. That was that a was, good time. That was super yep. exciting. Very yeah. doable. Yes, yes. Did anybody have anything else they want to say? I know we just said our names, and that usually means <laughs> we have to be done. But I just realized that we control what they're hearing right now. So we can. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Buy more comics. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Two weeks from now, Amazing Spider-Man 800. Mm-hmm. I think it's the biggest the biggest Pretty release huge. of the year. Yeah. It's kind so, of a big deal. Yeah. Just a little bit. So we will see all you guys next week. And uh, thanks again for listening. And send us some questions. Because uh, this week, three questions carried us uh, over an hour. Yeah. So who knows what 10 well, or 15 had, questions yeah. might do. We had a couple, you know. Askew. Yes. Yeah, we elaborated. We, we journeyed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. we, we, went, we went to... Yeah, that yeah. never happens. We went yeah. to Luke's. We were all yeah. over the place. We went to PA. <laughs> yep. All right. Yep. Yeah. Back in time. Good times. All righty. Take it easy, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>